Randomly picked this show looking for another, uh, wholesome foodie or cooking anime to tide me over. Bonus points if it also had an appetizing cast. So in some ways, Shining Heart's bread of happiness was the tasty treat I was looking for. But for every baguette and dinner roll baked, I quickly came to realize- <laughs> The show ain't about bread, y'all. Meet Rick Elwood. The new guy in town just trying to get this bread after forgetting nearly everything but his name. Or has he? Eragnas. The laid-back pretty boy monarch that holds Rico's potential in the palm of his hand. And this is the not-so-hidden BL subtext of Shining Heart's Xiaowa Sinopan. This anime is marketed as an isekai harem, innocent MC, thoughts, fantasy setting, the usual suspects, and is mandated by Article 12, Line 37 of Harem Law. Our MC Rick is greeted by three waifus in his bed early one morning. Normally the protagonist of a harem anime falls into one of two distinct types. A, a thirsty boy who gets embarrassed in the presence of anything that arouses him. Or B, a thirsty boy one bad day away from catching a hashtag. Rick is that rare unicorn that's neither sputtering nor shy, and certainly not sexually enraged in the presence of pretty girls. If anything, he's bored. Calm, unaffected, and maybe a little annoyed. Harm or not, the MC's supposed to be a sort of stand-in or wish fulfillment for the viewer, reacting in ways that mirror the desire of the target audience to some degree. But Rick does none of the usual harm MC things. There are no pervy shenanigans at all. He even gets pushed out of his own damn show, with chunks of runtime having him strangely absent even during the obligatory beach episode. Rick's push to the background of the promo poster and the DVD Blu-ray sets don't feature him at all. When we first meet Sword Boy Rick, he comes off as a bit angsty and strangely out of sorts, living a quiet life as a beggar. This comes as no surprise because Rick was once a warrior, but he's lost all memory of it as is typical of the Shining Game series. Angst aside, where many male MCs look either energetic or defiant, or cheeky, or even broody and determined, Rick spends the entirety of the anime with what's known as Sparrow Face, a face a lot of Japanese women tend to use when they're trying to look slightly scared, demure, and approachable to men. It's basically a waifu face, and is Rick's default expression 90% of the time. Mind you, the other men in this anime don't look like this, not even the slightly foppish prince. The only time Rick's not blending in with the other women in this show, with his resting beach face, is when he grabs his sword and acts like the lawful good warrior he was meant to be. While you bake bread, I took up the blade, Rick does dip his toe back into the sword and shield lifestyle at the behest of the totally straight Prince Rockness, who's introduced via harp solo, as you do. This saucy makes his voice unsurprisingly by Midori Kawa Hikaru, the VA who voices every pansexual, posh, pretty boy ever. Rockness has been watching Rick since he washed up ashore, and is thrilled someone like him finally arrived. あなたがこの島にたどり着いた時、兄様はとても喜んでいたわ。兄様はいつも待ちわびていたから。兄様の思いは一方的なものですが、あなたのお力添えをぜひよろしくお願いします。Anyway, the prince uses a recent break-in as an excuse to get Rick back in the game. Naturally, Rick gets into the groove and takes to being a warrior again like a fish to water. He successfully thwarts the cat burglar and gets praised and rewarded for his efforts. Rockness was 900% talking to Rick, and Rona Pratt falling for the fifth time was meant to distract the audience from the fact that Rognus was openly flirting with him. Also, the prince's reward is just a box under a sheet and is never actually shown. I plan to make a video about BL symbolism later, but sheets or cloth in anime are usually used to represent the idea of keeping something well hidden or covered up. It's a BL trope I've pointed out before and will definitely point out again. I bring this up because instead of, say, showing cash or precious gems or golden bullion, the camera quick cuts to roses. Is that Rick's reward for helping Rodgers? I probably don't need to point out how many times roses or flowers are used as a stand for a butthole being spread or a dude about to catch a dick in anime, but here we are. Booty holes aside, this isn't even the only time Rick gets a possibly sexy reward from Rodgers. 
僕は君を許そうえでは素直に懺悔した君に褒美としてこの歌を送ろうほらリックうわっ褒美はちゃんと受け取らないとダメだよララグナス様30 Pence Ragnus isn't even the only guy Rick had his eye on. He and the Waifus 3 are greeted by a surly androgynous elf on the shelf, Alvin, at the edge of the 100 acre wood in episode 1. Waifu number 1 is immediately off put by Alvin's charming personality, especially when he insults Rick's bread. But Rick isn't bothered by him in the slightest, completely ignores his rudeness, and even makes excuses for him after he leaves. They run into Alvin and his sister Rana again later to offer them some bread and gratitude about a bad storm Alvin had warned them about earlier. Alvin refused Rick's baking once before, so now he's really interested to see what he thinks of his bread now, and is relieved to find that he gave it his Sundere seal of approval. <laughs> Alvin even likes Rick's bread so much he gets fat off of it in the Yomakis. If Alvin got the ball rolling, then Rockness was the tipping point for Rick's、uh, awakening. After the mission Rockness gave Rick in episode 6, He's less and less able to, um, bake with the girls anymore, and the bread he makes with them tastes terrible. <laughs> When trouble comes in knocking for realsies, Rick is called upon once again to fight for his country by Ragnus, who is now a constant reminder of who and what Rick has been running from. They make a big old deal of Rick getting back in the saddle, and the sword regifting ceremony goes on for way too long. This anime really wants you to know that it's Prince Ragnar specifically that's been holding onto Rick's sword since he came to the island. As if the gay man being outed metaphors weren't obvious enough, there's a scene in episode 9 where Rick's harem sees him struggling to get his baking boner up. They actually have to turn to him and say it doesn't matter what or who he was, as long as he keeps on being Rick. <laughs> Rick later fully embraces his、uh, warrior status, and immediately after doing so, he is suddenly more powerful and more sure of himself than he's ever been. Rick kicks all the asses, slays the dragon, and then conveniently falls into a coma like slumber. Rick is shown sleeping a lot, like having to wake him is a thing in this show. Endless sleep and comas are yet another subtle motif gay narratives like to use to absolve closeted characters from making any romantic progress with any of the waifus the show has lined up. This is actually a parallel to Kaguya's story. When we first meet her, she's in a comatose state already, and only comes out of it when offered bread. She's also a drifter with missing memories wanting to leave her old life behind. She and Rick are very much alike. Rick is not ああ。疲れたくないの。あ。もう疲れた。何も見たくない。私と同じ。あ。ああ、疲れたよ。ああ、何も見たくない。リック。疲れたんでしょ。The covert gay subtext gets less and less subtle by the second as Rick goes to get baking lessons from the local abuela. She even looks directly into camera, giving the audience, I mean Rick, trying and fake it till you make it advice. うん
Despite how many famously pansexual war heroes there are in Japan's history, or all the BL in the world, Japan hasn't exactly been known for its open-mindedness regarding gay men in real life. But Japan does love stories that come full circle, so Shiawase no Pan ends the way it began. The wife who's come to wake were before dawn as always, but this time he's already awake, dressed, and waiting for them. Rick ultimately abandons his past as a warrior, seeing it as a burden that's holding him back from a normal life. In his mind, the solution and the way to move forward is to continue trying to bake bread with girls. Eh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>